football media rights fees. Now, we have discussed this. It's been far enough back when Paul was not yet on vacation. Notre Dame seeking the triple its football rights to 65 or 75 million during the next cycle of negotiations. This is from front office sports. But the Irish want that kind of money. If they do, they might have to give up what they cherish the most. And that is their independence. And I don't ever see them doing that until it affects whether or not they can win a national championship in football. Now, the question I have, and I and we can discuss that too. Which schools, not just because there's an ego, but which schools in college athletics could truly be independent and survive? It can't be more than three to five to me. I don't know. I mean, we talked about uh, before the show when you brought it up, just kicking around Texas. And they, they had their – I mean, they they certainly have the, the economics around their program to give it a go, and, but they – it, it almost felt like they dipped their toe in the water with the Longhorn Network, and when it didn't work out, they went to a, a, a conference with more money. So even they, as big and as bad as they are financially, they couldn't do it. Uh, Notre Dame just built it in for so long that uh, you really truly have to have a national fan base and – the only other school you could compare it to was the one who was just independent and couldn't wait to get back in a conference, and that was BYU. Yeah. So I'm not sure the more I think about it, like there's certainly schools that could make a go of it and have the finances to do so, but would you be able to sustain, sustain, sustain it, it like Notre Dame has and uh, and be able to, to become as powerful as they are? I just don't know. Army, Navy, Air Force have been at times. Air Force, of course, has not been for a while, not Navy either. They used to be. Obviously, you mentioned Brigham Young, Craig. Your thoughts about the independence? There aren't very many even right now. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the Notre Dame money thing's interesting, but um, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, you said it just a second ago. BYU was independent. It was so great that they were begging to go to the Big 12. Um, you know, uh, Liberty was independent. It was so great that they, you know, were like, hey, let's get into a conference as soon as we possibly can. Um, so those who have you know, experience that here as of late all seem to be taking opportunities that are the opposite of independence because of the security, the the TV deals, the exposure, the amount of um, set up rivalries and contests. Like that's the thing is Ohio State goes independent and they probably could, but like, are they still playing Michigan every year? Are they getting Michigan State? Are they getting Penn State on a regular basis? Like, are they getting the full meal deal as an independent scheduling? Like Notre Dame's been able to work their way around that, but they've been a unique case. I don't think that you know, you just plop down Texas as an independent, and they probably could do it, or Ohio State. They could probably find a way to do it, but I think it ultimately leads them back to, like, but we can still make more money in the SEC where we're guaranteed to play LSU and Alabama and A&M and all those schools. So, yeah, I'm sure there are schools that could do it, but they wouldn't be as successful and as secure and as satisfied as they are, uh, you know, in a, a different arrangement. And so, yeah, I think that's just kind of something that's gone to the wayside. And, you know, if you can find a spot, you better grab it while you can because the independent life, especially as it dwindles, is not that attractive. And really, Notre Dame, if they weren't Notre Dame, would have mm -hmm. bolted from this whole arrangement a long time ago. But they're Notre Dame, and so they've somehow been able to kind of, you know, ride with it. But there's been long talk about eventually them having no choice but to be forced into into a situation like that and so to hear you know at least the ears are open and listening or at least there's things being put out there publicly of what they want you know i i can't see where people are reading into that and going oh is the time arriving where maybe they're going to have a, a, a fork in the road where they might have to make a, a decision i lean towards well it's notre dame they'll find a way to stay independent because it's just the, the benefits you get from being so unique but with the money part of it you know, I don't know. I mean, if they're seventy million dollars short versus being in the Big Ten, then that is something. No matter that, how that rich you up. are, that it's you not, have to think about at some point. Not just one year; that's the next year and the next year. Uh, they are attached to the ACC, and a lot of times there's the clarification needed. It used to be, I think, they've been independent in everything, but then they attached themselves to the ACC, which has been good for both. Uh, Patrick Crakes, former Fox Sports executive, he's been one of our analysts, one of our consultants on all this. Uh, realignment and television deals. My big picture thought is that Notre Dame will need a conference to support a three-time bump long-term. I think either the Big Ten or the SEC would do that. Also, don't rule out a third new conference in several years 
A lot of assumptions are falling apart as pay TV bundle economics go flat. Uh, and, and by the way, thanks to our web for sending this story to me on direct message and Twitter. I, I think I like long term. I think that that eventually it may just happen because um, as those other you know collective groups of you know. 16 conferences get more and more money for their TV deals and Notre Dame, you know, will get it a lot for them. I, I, I don't know if they're going to triple their media rights, but I know they're going to get a lot more because they can. And we went through it back when this first came out. They're a guaranteed two to three million views on NBC every Saturday which is a fantastic lead-in or follow-up to the Big Ten that they have. So it's it makes sense for them to keep that intact. Now, how much money will they give and do they have available for Notre Dame? That remains to be seen. So I think in the short term, they'll do that. But again, things do often change, as we've seen in college football, very rapidly. So maybe one day they'll have to do it. But... You know, they are different, and I and I do think this. I mean, everybody, you know, I've heard Texas and USC and Oregon, and there's some that could, but I'll go back to what I said first. I don't think, as much as you may think about certain programs, like USC and Texas and all that, that they truly have national fan bases in the same way that Notre Dame does. Notre Dame has a national fan base because they're they, because of their, their tie-in, their Catholic they school. They have a worldwide fan they base. They have a worldwide fan. They have that. The, BYU had the same thing and couldn't make it. You know, they couldn't wait to get in a conference. Notre Dame cherishes that independence. BYU made unique, it, but, but it was time to move. And, yeah. and I've said this on the show before. I'll say it again. Um, people, my dad, you say it all the time. Why is Notre Dame so popular? Because they have a recruiter in every town. Yeah, they do, and, and sometimes many recruiters in every town. That that's not going to change uh, for them. So they're always going to have that. And I think that that's what makes them different than, like, yes, Texas is a gigantic fan base. Ohio State, gigantic fan base. USC has a, a, a really big fan base and all that. But are they truly to the into the places that Notre Dame is? No, they're not. Notre Dame is different because even if you're not a Notre Dame fan as a Catholic, it's kind of on your radar all the time. Even if you don't like them, you, are, you have – 20 people in your life that love Notre Dame. It's always top of mind. I grew up that but way. But I, I, uh, I, I know that when I was growing up, it was the team that most people hated. If you weren't, you, you either loved Notre Dame or you, you wanted to see them lose. Now there might be three or four other schools around college athletics. That's Alabama. Alabama. And eventually, it might soon be Georgia. Right. Texas is a part of that mix. And, and maybe even, like, you even hear this about Florida or, or even Ohio State. Penn State used to be independent. Now, of course, they've been a part of the Big Ten for quite some time. But I, I, I know they still have that clout, and the numbers show they still have that clout. But I don't think it is what it was 25 or 30 years ago because so much has, so much has changed in college athletics. And that's why they're also, if you look at their football schedule, and then, of course, they're in the, the ACC in basketball, why there's also the connection there. And uh, But any – Every conference in America, if they called, they'd pick up the phone and say, how much do you want? Yeah. Every, period. Pa Paxton says Texas has a national fan base. And I would say, I know he's a Texas fan, but the abject failure of the Longhorn Network proves that they don't. They don't. They have a big fan base. How it much was the failure, the distribution, and or was it the national... I mean, it's ESPN's failure for believing Texas that they that people in in Massachusetts gave a crap. But uh, that was ESPN, not Texas. I mean, good for them; they made money. But the fact that if the Longhorn Network had worked the way that Texas wanted it to, the SEC wouldn't be necessary. Not, not the them. way Texas wanted it to. The way ESPN well, wanted everybody it to. wanted it to. But Texas, it just didn't. Texas was just counting the money. Yeah, they, but it, it didn't. A, it, it did not hurt them at all. Uh, they just got paid, and a lot of it. 